No, unfortunately, I mean, I was, I was born in 1955 when Dave's professional career was starting and when it finished in 1964, I was only nine years of age. So, but I do have uh, videos of his fights and I've seen lots of his, his fights on that type of um, uh, media, but I haven't actually seen him fight in person. Well, I, one thing I did find out was the reason why his family um, emigrated, for bottom of a better term, from Scotland down to Dartford, and that was through a football connection that um, his um, his uncle uh, had played professional football with the Wolverhampton Wonders, and um, when he was getting to the end of his career, a uh, Dartford Football Club, who played in the Southern League at that time, they invited him uh, down uh, to play for them, and. Dartford Football Club at that time was owned by people from London Paper Mills and other businesses in the Dartford area and through that connection they managed to secure work and houses for uh, Dave's mother and father and uh, Dave's father's brothers. So I thought that was quite interesting, in fact that's the first chapter in the book. I retired from the police about three years ago and uh, everybody says they've got a book in them and uh, but nobody, most people never ever take up the opportunity to do anything about it and I just had this interest in Dave's uh, career. I was a boxing fan, I had time on my side and I thought it was a challenge and I said I, just, I wonder if I could meet the challenge and hopefully I have. Well, I think my hardest one, as a lot of them was hard, uh, Carlos Ortiz. He was a very experienced man when I fought him. Uh, he was very hard to beat, actually. Well, he was an absolute fantastic fighter and uh, so experienced as an American. You can see that uh, Americans used to get uh, better than we did over here with fights and everything else. And uh, yeah, and this is what uh, we wanted in England, wasn't it? Fighting Americans and foreigners all the time. A sport I took up, which I, you know, I mean, my mother said, no, no, you don't get your face wasted, son. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a saying, you get your face wasted. Uh, and it was hard to get over her, actually. But uh, eventually I did get through there, and that was it. And I started doing things there. And the trainers there actually uh, helped me along. Uh, and then I got to a certain stage where I couldn't, where I was with Dark Amateur Boxing Club at the beginning. Uh, and then I had to, which I was poached by the London Club Fitzroy Lodge. And this was the place where you had to be uh, if you were going to think of being a professional and everything else. Because London, uh, you had all the good fighters uh, on your doorstep up there. It was like everything else. It's, if you can't pick yourself up, you, you'd suddenly walk away all the time, wouldn't you? Or you sort of yourself, right, we'll have it again if we can. Uh, which did happen, and it happened again. Both of them were bad decisions. Terrible. But then when I uh, got him in the third time and knocked him out, you know, six rounds or something, was it? Hmm? Uh, they said, well, oh, he's old now. So I, I never really got the praise I should have got. Hmm? He's an old man now, I thought. Well, I think, yeah, I think most places that you went to and uh, the crowds were there, weren't they? They were very, very, uh, a good crowd, weren't they? They didn't uh, throw things at you or anything else at times. Sometimes maybe they, they booed you a little bit. But no, it was, uh, 
good. And I had a good following from Dartford. I had a few, <laughs> over a thousand or more come from Dartford itself. So it was, uh, it was quite handy. And they give you a G up to make sure that you uh, done something to keep them proud of you as well and to say thank you. Because every time I got uh, the old hall full or something else, I mean, because I used to be able to get a percentage of, instead of having, I used to get a purse money and a percentage, whichever was the largest, which was quite a good uh, little deal we had with promoters and that. Uh, the heavy, heavier weights, at one time you couldn't uh, get good fighters at times, and the heavier weights were there, so I mean, that was it. It was purse money you went after as well when you were there. You couldn't turn around and say, well, I uh, don't like to fight him or fight him. To me, I'd fight anybody. Uh, not that I'm boasting or anything else, but hmm, if I could train, and uh, something I knew like Peter Waterman and uh, people like that, fine. And Peter Waterman was something I thought, well, fine. Because he was an arrogant bugger. Well, I, I, I took that on as an investment, that was all. I mean, I, of course, I, I went in training to. Um, I'll do you a little something like in a minute. Uh, no, uh, it was, they were quite good uh, business at that time, hairdressing. Ladies were coming up and something else, so I'd done it. I had a very big one, I had like a 42 seater. Was every, the other ones in Dartford had about eight seats or something else. So. And they had very, very good staff. Uh, and it took off, really. My favourite story uh, of Dave was he was due to fight uh, a Welshman uh, called Willie Lloyd in Cardiff. And the lead up to the fight, he was unwell, and uh, but he went through with the fight. And after the fight was over, he went down to visit a friend in Dartford the following day, and the friend realised that there was something medically wrong. So he insisted on in taking uh, Dave to St. St. Thomas Hospital in St. John's Wood, London. And when he got there, he was very unwell, and it turned out he had pneumonia. And in those days, it was a, a Catholic, a Roman Catholic hospital, and all the, the nurses were nuns. And um, when they, one of the treatments for pneumonia in those days was to fill the room with steam, so that the patient would breathe in the steam and it would help him recover from his pneumonia. And of course, Dave was, had been was semi-conscious. Now, his brother tells me that Dave almost died. Uh, he was so ill. But when he was starting to recover from his illness and he was starting to wake up in the hospital, he can remember waking up and seeing steam or mist. And then a nun's face appeared. <laughs> And Dave thought he died and went to heaven. <laughs> and that's, that is a true story. True, true. That's a true story. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 that's,